What's going on guys? Welcome back and to all you new people, my god you crawled out of nowhere, I wasn't expecting that one. It's good to have you here though. So for this video we're just going to be continuing on where we picked up from, from the last Star Armor video. Let's get into it. What this scene is going to be is a combat medic attending to a wounded soldier and I've still got an out of production Cadian wounded soldier from the old days and I've got the new medic out of the new command box and what we're going to do is ah! <laughs> why why uh. right now i've retrieved that part from the warp shall we continue with the previous trailer fort i think so as i was saying before being so rudely interrupted it's going to be a combat medic scene. First aider helping out guy in need of first aid. Let's just roll the footage of getting this sorted and painted up, shall we? Now what I'm doing here is I'm just painting up the jerry can, I'm going to paint up the stubber and a couple of other items around here just in plain silver so I can give him a distressed look later where here you can see that I'm just glazing on and then dabbing off with my finger to give it that nice distressed look. Um, so it looks like it's been out in the elements for a long time, just been sat there corroding away and slowly losing that top layer of paint. Once that steps out of the way we're going to dirty it all down by putting a wash on so we're going to be, i'm going to use agrax earth just for the way that it dries it's got that brownie tinge to it which gives it a more grimy look and we're going to get that all over our items of interest which so apart from the main models on this diorama is all the other bits that sort of make bring it together give it a bit of life give it a bit of character Once all our items of interest have been painted up to the standard that you want them to be, the next step is going to be painting the actual ground terrain up. Now, instead of using my airbrush and going, hey guys, don't worry, you can use a brush as well, I thought I'd slog it in the rough with you. Not that I <coughs> had broken my airbrush at this point. Um, and I would use my brush just to be you know, down there with you and fighting the good fight. And, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go clean my airbrush out and try and fix it ah much much easier silky smooth almost so i'm sure this step is a bit of a given but all we're doing is working from a darker brown up to a lighter brown just to get that mud texture working for us fine i'll put the airbrush down i'll go back to using the brush just like the rest of you jesus so now we're past the airbrushing step so you want to water down your next highlight color which I'm going to sort of put around a few highlight points and then I'm going to really water it down for the next stage just to sort of bring it into the universe again, try and draw it all together and pull it all into one. But we want that crater to be the lightest colour because that's where our focal point is going to be and where we want to draw attention to. Now I'm going to be starting to use what I think is real magic in a bottle and trust me, once I work out how to recreate this for cheaper, I will be making a video about it and I will be sharing that with you guys. But this is Vallejo's European Thick Mud. It's about £5-6 and it's worth every penny in my opinion. 
So once we've got that down, you want to get that watered down brown color that we've got, just put it over it. Again, just drawing everything back in, giving it a neutral color that it shares with the rest of it. Now that we're getting close to the end product and our terrain's really taking shape, it's looking muddy, it's got that central focal point. Um, we're just gonna add some more interesting facts to it. I'm gonna do that with Vallejo's still water resin. And to start it off, just decant it into a cup, uh, a little pot, or what I've got here is a shot glass. Once it's in there, I'm going to add some extra color into it to colorize the water so it's not just clear water on this muddy battlefield. I'm going to put that highlight color, the watered down mud effect into it. And I'm also going to put some gnome oil into it to give it an oily look as well. And once that's done, I'm going to use a little pipette to put it into the areas that I want it to be, that I feel make it look best. So this guy's been sat in my drawer since 2004, not doing anything. He's got a new lease of life, and we're gonna mark him up and pop him onto where he's gonna spend the rest of his time on display on this board. So what I'm gonna do, for the first pin, I'm going to put a little dot of yellow onto the bottom where I've put the pin in, and then I'm gonna dab it onto the board, and that will tell me where I need to drill down to pin him to the base. And then once you've done that, rinse and repeat for the other model so that you know exactly where you need to drill to get those pins down. Once that's finished, I'm going to just do a final highlight around the rim of that crater just to really accentuate the fact that that's where the focal point is. That's where I want you looking. And then that's it, guys. That is your diorama completed. <laughs> Guys, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. If you've enjoyed and learned something, please leave a like. If you have a story to go with this little diorama that I've got here, please go down to the comments and leave it there. I'd love to read it. And if you want to see more, subscribe. As always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one.